Hey everyone, today's fabulous recipe has been requested and we are going all the way back to the very early 1900s to discover this delicious, delicious casserole. You're gonna love it, let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. We are serving up retro classics with a side of food history. Today's classic, Johnny Marzetti. Now, if you're in Ohio, I know you know what it is. It didn't really spread out that much more in the Midwest, but in Ohio, it is very, very popular. And I want to thank Vince M for requesting this. It's really good. And if you have never heard of it, you should probably give this a try. Okay, we're going to get started and I'm going to tell you all about who Johnny Marzetti is and where it came from. So the first thing we have is we have a very large skillet, which you're going to need. And to that, we're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. Yeah, I know it's a lot, but like I said, this recipe comes from 19, around 1910. Okay, so I let it go for about a minute. Our oil is warm and we are going to add one large onion chopped up and it comes to about three cups. So we're going to get that in there and you're going to want to cook this until the onion is pretty translucent. So who is Johnny Marzetti and where did this casserole come from? There was a restaurant in Ohio that's on Broad Street, right down the street from Ohio University, and it was called Marzetti's. And it was opened by Teresa and Joseph Marzetti way back around 1910. And they wanted to put something on the menu that was affordable for the college students, filling for the college students, and delicious for the college students. And they created Johnny Marzetti. They named it after Teresa's brother-in-law, Johnny Marzetti. That's nothing special, just she wanted to name something after her brother-in-law. And way back then, an order of this casserole was 45 cents, which is like $12.88 in today's money. So Marzetti's no longer exist, but if you ever heard of Marzetti salad dressing, it's the same, well, lineage. Anyway, all the college students would always go to Marzetti's and order Johnny Marzetti. It was just the perfect, perfect college dish. So after they graduated, they'd go back home in Ohio and they would start making it at home. So there's really about as many recipes as Johnny Marzetti as there are families in Ohio. It started branching out a little bit into the Midwest, but it never really made it to the East Coast or the West Coast. It's just a very, very popular Midwest staple. But this particular recipe is the original from the Ohio Historical Society. So this is where it all started. Then everybody just started adding their magic. Okay, so it's been about three minutes and they're just starting to get translucent, which is exactly what you want. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add three cups of sliced mushrooms and in they go. I am actually using baby bellas, which are also called cremini's, which are also called baby portobello mushrooms because that's exactly what they are. So now you're gonna stir this for another five minutes and mushrooms are mostly water. So you, we need all the moisture to cook out of the mushrooms. And we'll be back when that happens. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Take a look. See your mushrooms, they're just starting to cook down. Your onions are beautifully translucent. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna add two pounds of ground beef to this mixture. What I like to do is I like to kind of crumble it over because if you just put it in one big cloth, <laughs> it's a lot harder to kind of separate it out as it cooks. So if you actually give it a head start, it'll be much happier. So we're gonna just go ahead and put all this ground beef into our pan, and then we're gonna cook it. And we're gonna wait until it's completely brown, no more pink left, completely cooked through. And I'll see you right back here when that's happened. Okay, our meat is all brown, and look at that. It's brown, the mushrooms have cooked down, the onions have cooked down. An interesting thing to note about this recipe is the original recipe, which is what we're making, included no seasonings whatsoever, which is probably why it evolved many, many times through many, many families and all in families customize their own recipes. It's still wonderful, but if you wanna add a little seasoning, feel free, I'm sticking to the original like I like to do. Okay, so also another thing to note is we don't drain this. So when you buy your ground beef, I buy like a 90-10, so it's as low fat content as possible because you already have your olive oil and you already have the leftover fat from the meat. So here we go. 
But if we're feeding hungry college students, this is probably the order of the day. Okay, so now we're gonna turn off our heat and we are gonna move a heat source far away or just take it off the stove. <laughs> and we're just gonna put it right here off the heat. We're gonna need to move that over a little bit. There we go. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add is three and a half cups of tomato sauce. And if you're curious, it's just one large 29 ounce can. It, three and a half cups perfectly. So in goes our tomato sauce. And we want to give it a stir. And then we're going to add two and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And you can buy it pre-shredded. I actually shredded this myself in my food processor today. Sometimes I'm lazy, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> Usually I am. So now you're going to mix this all together and make sure that all the tomato sauce is incorporated and everybody is in the pool completely happy. Okay, now we're gonna take this out of the way and we are gonna bring in a well-greased nine by 13. And let's see if I can do this one-handed. There we go. And we're gonna pour our mixture right into the casserole. Now wait, there's more. In here, I have a one pound cooked package of elbow macaroni. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna fit all this, but we're gonna try. So you're just gonna put it right on top and stir it a little bit. And then you're just going to keep adding it little bits. And as you can see, this casserole is going to feed a small army. And if you have macaroni spilling all over the place or you just want to maybe put it in two, you can totally do that. Or mix it in one ginormous bowl and then put it in. I am following. Teresa Marzetti's instructions exactly. Okay, the last step, I have one more cup of shredded cheddar cheese, which is gonna go right on top. One of my twins is coming over for dinner. I think he's gonna be very happy. Yes, I do have twins. This one graduated from Boise State. <laughs> so hopefully he won't mind the Ohio State connection. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to bake. So I've got a 350 oven, and this is gonna go in for about 40 minutes, and we'll be right back when it's done. Okay, it's been 40 minutes, but before we check out our John and Marzetti, when you make your pasta, boil it for about two minutes less than the package directions, because if you want, if you get it completely done, and then it goes in the oven after that, it could get mushy. So you want it a little bit al dente. And the second thing, do you have a recipe request? Join my Yester Kitchen Facebook page. You can message me from there, or you can share a family recipe with me. I've been getting so many. I love them, and you never know when I can turn one into an episode. Okay, Vince, you ready? Take a look. How does that look? Did I do good? Oh my God, look, everything is brown and cheesy and mushroomy and beefy, and it's delicious. Without the seasonings, it's delicious. I can tell how why this became so popular. Okay, so, I'm gonna serve this with a nice salad because, you know, with all these carbs, you should be able to, should probably balance it out. Here we go, oh, this isn't a dish that sticks together like lasagna. It's a it's definite pasta messy dish, but oh, what a pasta messy dish it is. Look at that. This is just so good, so good. Make it for your family. It's great. It's absolutely delicious. So thank you so much, Vince, for your request. I'm so happy I was able to make it. Everyone else try to make it too. Let's get it out of Ohio and start filtering it through the country because this is just, it's just a fabulous dish. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday and every Tuesday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even Johnny Marzetti, the Ohio staple, thank you Vince, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.